My CSN. My CSN is where students can go to register for classes. Now, it is possible to search for classes without logging into My CSN. To do so, students can go to csn.edu, click on Mega Menu Options, and click on Course Search. And this brings up the option to search for classes at CSN. If you're already a student at CSN, you can go to csn.edu, log in. If you have not validated your GoCSN account, you will need to do that first. Once you have validated it, go ahead and go to GoCSN and enter your username and password. And you will come to your GoCSN page. Now I see my CSN tile right here under recent, but you might not. Also, if you see WebPass pop up on your screen, you can go ahead and install it to reduce the number of sign-ins or only if you're using a personal computer, or you can cancel it. Now, if you don't see My CSN, you want to click on some of these tiles until you find it. Here it is under Home 2, under Default. So you click on My CSN, and if you installed WebPass, you will not have to sign in on this screen. If you didn't, then please sign in now. Once you sign in, it'll bring you to your home page. It may look like this or like this. Click for My CSN Student Center. And you will get to this page here. You can use this tab here to open and close. And notice that here are your academics, and you are not enrolled in classes. And here is your enrollment shopping cart. If you scroll over to the right, or look at the right, you will see your communication center, holds, to-do list, enrollment dates, assigned advisors, and third-party release. Now, what are these things? Well, the communication center is obvious. This is your way to communicate with CSN. New student first steps. This is important because the new student's first steps office or the first year experience puts a hold on your account until you have completed the necessary orientation and placement testing. And each student is different depending on how they apply for admissions. So click on the details for more information. You will see the new student first steps hold and instructions. For new incoming students, there is a mandatory intake process to be completed before registering for classes. Please complete the following steps and the enrollment hold will be removed. Step one, English placement test and math placement test. Step two, CSN orientation. And step three, academic advising. Press the back button until you get to this page again. And then look at your to-do list. This step tells you how to take the English guided placement. You can submit scores or you could take the survey. Here is academic advising. It states before enrolling in your first semester of classes, you are required to meet 
with an academic advisor who will interpret your placement scores, develop your first semester schedule based on your area of study, and let you know about the resources at CSN. Once you complete the online orientation and placement, you are ready to make an appointment to meet your advisor. So even though students really want to get a good start and start and add courses to their shopping cart, register and pay, they may not be able to do so depending on the hold on the account. So to remove the hold, students must follow all of the instructions listed in the My CSN Student Center under holds and to-do list. So check that out. Back into this list, the next thing is enrollment date, and this is very important. After you've met with your academic advisor and you want to enroll in classes, you can do so only if your enrollment date is available to you. So when I click on it, it gives me open enrollment dates by session. And notice that mine are all November 22nd but today is November 19th, so I can't enroll yet. I have to wait to add my classes from my shopping cart into my area to, for payment. I'm not able to do that. The reason why is because students who are already current at CSN, maybe as sophomores, get a chance to enroll first. And then the freshmen get another chance to enroll. And then new students enroll after that. In the meantime, while you're completing your placements and your orientation and meeting with your academic advisor, and if you're an ESL student getting help from the language lab, you can also search for classes and see what interests you. So I'm going to click on select subject and I'm going to go to ESL. And I'm going to select. And ESL appears here. Now I can type in one class in particular, like 139, or I can just search all ESL classes available. And I get something like this, 32 class sections found. Here is the name of the course. Here is the ID number for the course, the section number, and the day, time, location, room, instructor, meeting dates, instruction method, status, and the option to select the course you want to add to your shopping cart. Now, if you look at the days and times, some of them are TBA. This means it's an online course only, and there are no days and times that you must come to campus. Some of them are on West Charleston campus, and some could be on North Las Vegas or Henderson. So it's important to check the location if you're taking an in-person class. Under instructor, sometimes you'll see the name, and that's usually the full-time instructor until the class has begun, and then both full-time and part-time instructors will be listed. If there is no current instructor for the course, you will see to be announced or staff. And over here, you will see the meeting date. Some of these are 16 week courses and they take place over the entire semester. And some may be only eight week courses and they may start in January and go through March or start in March and go through May. 
sometimes courses can be taken back to back, like a 129 in the first eight weeks and a 132 in the second eight weeks. And sometimes courses can be taken simultaneously, like 129 and 132 for the entire 16 weeks. I'm going to select this course. Now what happens here? If I want to enroll in this course, for example, 135, it tells me there is a prerequisite. The prerequisite is the placement test or 132. So if I'm a new student, I cannot enroll in this course until I have taken the ESL placement test and placed into 135 or higher. When you click on the course that you want, in addition to the information from the previous page, you're also going to see course notes. It is so important for students to read these notes. It usually indicates how the class is going to meet. Maybe the instructor will do a hybrid where some of the classes will be online and some will be in person, or sometimes the entire class will be in person except for exams. Each instructor is different, so it's important to check out those notes. Once you add the course to your shopping cart, you can go to your shopping cart or show all. Notice I have two courses here. One course is a mistake. So I'm going to go to my shopping cart. Over here in my shopping cart, I can select the course. I'm going to click on this one and select delete. And that's how easy it is. I can go back to the class search by clicking search, or I can go back up here and search again. Now, if my enrollment date has come and I want to now take this course from my shopping cart and enroll, I can just click on the course and select enroll, or I can go up here to enroll and it's already in my my cart and I just proceed. Because it's not my time to register yet, I will have this special note that says, you do not have a valid enrollment appointment at this time. That's because I am not allowed to enroll until November 22nd and today is only November 19th. So it's important for you to check your date. To check your date again, and I cannot emphasize this enough, go back to your shopping cart. Go back to my plan. And if you still don't get back to the main page, you can click on go to at the top, click on student center, and then press this little tiny circle with an arrow. And it will look like this. And remember to scroll to the right if your screen is small. And you'll see your enrollment dates over here one more time. CSN expects all students to be able to do this independently. If you need extra assistance from a family member or a friend, for example, then you would need to come to the third party release and complete the paperwork. For example, if your husband or wife, boyfriend, girlfriend, son, daughter, aunt, uncle, etc. wants to help you at CSN and you want them to receive information about you, then you need to sign this piece of paper and give CSN permission to communicate with your friend or family member. Otherwise, CSN has to keep your information confidential. Now, keep in mind, before you can do any enrolling at all, 
you have to do what, you, what is needed to remove the hold. So you need to take your placement test. You need to take your, or do your orientation and you need to see an academic advisor. If you take your placement test, you, you would be able to go to My CSN and click on your student center, student homepage, and this down arrow here will give you your test scores. And you press go. And you'll be able to see which test scores you have there. If you haven't even taken the English guided self-placement test, and if you're an ESL student and you would like to take the ESL test, then you'll start with those. So the English guided self-placement has a link directly to it in my CSN. You can click on the link here. The English self-guided placement will tell students which type of English course that they need to take or if the ESL placement test is recommended for non-native English speakers. More information can be obtained from the placement testing page. Also, this placement testing page can get you to the math placement test as well. If you don't see specific communication that you need within my CSN, be sure to check both your personal email and your CSN student email. CSN student email will be the primary way CSN communicates with students if the information is not in my CSN. My CSN is also where you can check on your finances and make a payment. You can do an account inquiry. You can enroll in direct deposit. You can check class refund dates. You can view financial aid. This is where you accept or decline your financial aid awards and report other types of financial aid. And there's a drop down menu that gives you very specific instances. You choose it and you press the go. This is just a brief summary of my CSN. If you have any other questions, you should go back to the Go CSN login page, click on my CSN, and get more information about my CSN here. It has information on what is my CSN? I'm a new student, how do I log in? I place classes in my shopping cart. How do I complete the registration process? Um, how to clear a browser cache? How to turn off pop-up blockers? There's lots of information here. What should you do if you're a new student, former student? How to complete the registration? and so on. There's just so much how-to information available. Good luck with my CSN.